In this video, I'm going to tell you five ways that the Sony a7R4 and other cameras with high resolution sensors will disrupt wildlife photography. This is five for Friday. Hey guys. Well, in three weeks, Sony will release the a7R4. It's their latest full frame camera and the big news is that it has a 61 megapixel sensor. And I think this is very interesting, both this camera and other cameras that will come in the future that will have sensors that will match that resolution or exceed it, I think have a lot of ramifications for wildlife photographers. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's get started. So the first thing that is maybe the most obvious thing when you have a camera with that much resolution is we think about lenses and the focal length that we carry around. So all wildlife photographers have to have at least one long lens. And there are always decisions to be made, complicating factors to think about in terms of which lens to bring along on a trip or which lens to, to own if you can only own one long lens. And often we as wildlife photographers, we need more reach because typically the wildlife is far away and we want to get in sometimes uh, as close as we can and sometimes even closer because we want to see some particular behaviors or particular detail. Most of us shoot with a minimum of a 400 millimeter lens, whether it's a prime or a uh, zoom. And some of us use a teleconverter on that to get us out to say 560 millimeters, or maybe we use a two times teleconverter to get us out to uh, 800. Uh, although typically there will be some image degradation uh, if we're using a 2x teleconverter. But most of the 1.4s are, are pretty good. So 560 is sort of the minimum and then you get into, okay, should I have a 500 millimeter lens? Should I have a 600 millimeter lens? Should I have an 800 millimeter lens? The problem is, especially if you're shooting primes, is that uh, obviously, firstly, as you go up in, in focal length there, you're talking about bigger and heavier lenses. And that's a problem uh, when you're having to drag your equipment around everywhere, and especially if you're having to hike with all your equipment. And then the other thing is that uh, if you have, especially a prime that is out at say five, six or 800 millimeters, you're stuck at that length and there's no way to, to back out. So the idea that you could have a lens that is not necessarily really long, not necessarily say five, 600 or 800, but say 400, uh, and that you could shoot with a very high quality lens, uh, because let's be clear that uh, you can't just put any crappy lens on a 61 megapixel sensor. You need a lens that can resolve detail so that the sensor can actually take advantage of that. Uh, but if you have a good lens, uh, in theory, you can get a lot of detail and then you can crop in uh, later on. So focal length, I think, is something that, that is really interesting when we think about these high resolution sensors because it means that you can get away with something that is perhaps not super long uh, and you don't have to buy one of these, you know, five, six, eight or 800 millimeter lenses. You don't have to carry it around and you can make do with a 400. And if you're using a 400 and you're using a prime, then you get the benefit of f2.8, which is fantastic. I know, as many of you may know from my other videos, I really love shooting with big apertures and there's a lot of advantages to that, especially with low light and subject isolation. So focal length is the first thing where I think this is really going to have an effect and uh, you could foresee that in, in the long term that, that possibly uh, people are less likely to bring along long lenses or feel the need to, to own a really, really long lens that's greater than, than 400 millimeters. So the other way that we often try to get more reach is by using a crop mode, either by cropping in the camera uh, into an APS-C mode or uh, using a crop sensor camera. Now here's the thing that's really interesting. Most of the crop sensor cameras nowadays are around 24 megapixels. So all of the current Sony APS-C cameras, for example, are all 24 megapixel uh, cameras, certainly the, the latest models are. The Sony a7R III with its 42 megapixel sensor, its crop mode was 18 megapixels or still is 18 megapixels. But with the 61 megapixel a7R IV, you'll be able to shoot a crop mode image of 26 megapixels. So it's actually more than the 24 megapixels. 
So this begs the question as to why you would even need a crop sensor body. Uh, I know that I uh, am not going to have one any, any longer and uh, I'm getting rid of my A6400 and uh, now that I have this RX100 that I'm shooting videos on, I really have no need for a, a crop sensor body, an APS-C body. So uh, I will just shoot 61 me megapixel images and then when I decide that I really want to have a, a crop in the camera as opposed to doing it in post later on, uh, if I really want to crop in the camera because I want to, for example, get m more focus points over the, the, um, uh, the, the area of the sensor or I want to have smaller images, small, smaller file sizes that, uh, that allow me to get more in the buffer or to store more on a, on a, on a storage, on an SD card, uh, I will just choose to crop in the camera, in the full frame camera and get those 26 megapixel images. And now here's the thing. When you look at uh, where APS-C sensors are going, uh, there already are some that are greater than 24 megapixels. Uh, and in fact, just recently there's been some leaks around the Canon EOS M6 Mark II and that that will have a 32 megapixel sensor. And if you extrapolate out 32 megapixel uh, APS-C uh, sensor, to a full frame sensor uh, at the same pixel density, uh, you'll basically end up at 80 megapixels, which is interesting because that's a number that's been thrown around uh, as, uh, as a rumor that Canon might be releasing in the future a full frame uh, camera with an 80 megapixel sensor. So uh, it can only get better is what I'm saying. Uh, 61 megapixels is really only the beginning and we could definitely see uh, going up from that and a lot of the best lenses on the market, the Sony G Master lenses, for example, are supposed to be capable of resolving detail to 100 megapixels. So we've actually got a long way to go and 61 megapixels is really only the start. So all to say that I think that now with these high resolution sensors, there's also less need to have a crop sensor camera. Now here's something that I think is really exciting when you have this possibility of having these really high resolution sensors and taking shots that are uh, zoomed further out and where you can see more of the environment in the shot. Uh, you now have the ability to take that image and crop it in a multitude of ways uh, to zoom in further in post and uh, crop in further and see more detail and get a tighter shot uh, as well as say turn the, the uh, orientation of the image around. So if you shot it in landscape, you could go to portrait. If you shot it in portrait, you could go to landscape. So it really gives you a lot of flex flexibility and you could take a single image and do lots of things with it in terms of composition. And I think that's really exciting. Earlier, I was talking about the need to have lenses that are capable of resolving detail to the level of these new high resolution sensors. And I think this means that there will be uh, more of a investment that we will see over time with people investing in, in high quality glass that's capable of, of resolving that detail at those, those high resolutions. Because now we do sometimes see people using, because that they have no choice and, and it's, you know, anything else is, is beyond their budget, but sometimes people will use lower quality glass, uh, some uh, cheaper zoom lenses that do have the focal range but they really the image quality is really not there and perhaps you don't see it if you're shooting at 24 megapixels but if you were to try to shoot at 60 or 80 or 100 megapixels uh, you would find out if you then try to crop in that the detail is, is not really there so I, I, I foresee that as the the sensors get bigger and and uh, or rather the, the 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 pixel density gets higher and the resolution gets higher that uh, we will see more uh, of an investment in high quality glass. And I also think that, that over time what's happening too is that the, most of the, the manufacturers are bringing out higher quality lenses. The lenses are getting better all the time. And the final way that I see cameras like the a7R4 and other coming cameras with high resolution sensors affecting wildlife photographers is the storage and the larger file sizes. Because obviously what this means is that uh, you've got files that are now uh, very large, 50% larger than, than the 42 megapixel uh, images, and you'll need more storage, you'll need bigger SD cards to hold the same number of images, you'll need a greater processing power on your computer or your tablet to be able to process 
things and uh, we will need more processing power in the cameras also to be able to, to process all that data and keep up with the same frame rates as well. So I'm really excited about this change in camera technology. It's uh, something that I think is just starting now. Of course, there was a time when we thought 42 megapixels was a lot, uh, but now uh, you, you know, we're seeing 61 and I think then the race will be on uh, to see uh, how fast we progress from there. And I think the competition uh, will be a healthy thing if uh, Canon and Nikon and other manufacturers can up the ante and uh, get us even higher resolution sensors. And also then if, if uh, all the manufacturers are also producing high quality glass to take advantage of, of these sensors. I'd love to hear from you guys. How are you finding your resolution, the resolution of your cameras today? Uh, is, is it limiting you? Are you looking forward to a high resolution sensor? Whether, it's, whether you shoot on Sony or uh, whether you shoot on another system, I, I think eventually, certainly the major manufacturers will all come out with uh, high resolution sensors in their full frame cameras. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.